Hi, today I'm going to be talking about risk parity portfolios. This talk is going to have the following agenda. We are going to start by discussing Markowitz and portfolio optimization theory. Then we are going to quickly move on to risk parity portfolio theory, where we are going to see some historical events, convex and non-convex mathematical formulations, and practical code implementations in R and Python, and finally some conclusion thoughts. Modern portfolio theory seeks to find an answer to the following question. How do, I, how do we allocate a given amount of money into N assets? If we assume that the log returns R of the stocks are given are IID Gaussian, then for a portfolio W, we have the following properties. Its expected return and variance are given as follows where mu and sigma are respectively the expected return of the stocks and the covariance matrix. In 1952, Dr. Harry Markowitz proposed the following convex optimization problem so as to design a portfolio. This convex problem is very, intuit is very intuitive because it maximizes the expected return of the portfolio while at the same time minimizing the variance of the portfolio, which is often thought as a measure of risk. Despite being very intuitive, this portfolio is surprisingly sensitive to estimation errors on mu and sigma. It also does not perform risk diversification very well. Risk parity is a changing philosophy in which we would like to allocate risk directly rather than capital. The first risk party fund was created in 1996 by the Bridgewater Associates. They named it the All Weather Portfolio because as they observed, in practice this portfolio performed fairly well in many different scenarios. In 2004, Bridgewater published the white paper entitled Engineering Target Returns and Risks where they talk about the, the first risk parity portfolios. After 2011, risk parity gains a broad adoption and it's been used by many investment funds till now. The basic idea is to design a portfolio such that the risk is equally allocated among the asset classes. In this chart, we see a basic example comparing risk parity portfolio in a Markowitz portfolio in a set of a few stocks. On the top chart, we see the weight allocation for risk parity and Markowitz. At first, we can see that Markowitz allocate a lot of money into only a few selected stocks, whereas risk parity presents a more diversified portfolio. On the bottom chart, we see the key idea of risk parity, where it allocates the risk in a uniform way whereas Markowitz allocates risk to only a few stocks. Now, the problem formulation of a risk parity portfolio begins, by the, begins with the decomposition of a measure of risk, in which, in this case, we are going to be using the volatility as the measure of risk. We can decompose the volatility following Euler's theorem, where the, der the derivative of the volatility with respect to the i-th portfolio weight is called the marginal risk contribution. This marginal risk contribution measures the sensitivity of the portfolio volatility to the i-th asset. And it can be defined to other measure of risks, such as value at risk and conditional value at risk. Now, the risk contribution of the i-th asset is defined as follows. And from Euler's theorem, we can see that if we sum over all the risk contributions, we get back the total portfolio volatility. The relative risk contributions is basically a normalization, a normalized version of the risk contribution. Now we can define the risk parity portfolio problem more mathematically by the following feasibility problem. We would like to find a vector W that obeys the following equality constraints where on the left-hand side, we have the relative risk contributions, and on the right-hand side, we have the risk budgets given by the user. 
So at first, this problem doesn't look trivial. However, if we consider an, uh, an approximated version where the coerced matrix is only diagonal, then there, there exists a closed form solution. And it turns out that this closed form solution is the so-called inverse volatility portfolio. In 2013, however, through a change of variables, Spino noticed that the risk quality problem can be formulated as the following convex problem, whose optimality condition is exactly equal, is exactly equivalent to the feasibility problem we saw in the previous slide. However, this convex problem is not is not in a nice form, i.e. it's not a QP or an LP. Therefore, in 2013, Griff Billen proposed a cyclical coordinate descent algorithm to solve this problem. The basic idea of the CCD algorithm is that it fixes all the variables except one and solve for that one free variable. And it turns out that there exists a closed form update for that free variable. To the best of our knowledge, the CCD algorithm is one of the best one of the best algorithms, both in scalability and in speed. However, despite despite the risk party problem being formulated in a convex, as a convex problem, it is limited to only long only portfolios. In practice. Practitioners would like to have additional constraints, such as box constraints, or additional terms in the, in the objective functions, such as the maximization of the expected return. In 2012, Brother and Honkali proposed to solve the risk parity problem as the following non-convex problem. Then how do, how do we solve this non-convex formulation? Well, at first we could try using general purpose solvers, but it turns out general purpose solvers are often slow. In 2015, Feng and Palomar took advantage of the non-convex structure of, of this optimization problem and proposed a very nice algorithm. The basic idea is to convexify the objective function. It turns out that this algorithm is pretty fast. So the basic idea is to find a nice approximation to the non-convex term, solve it and repeat. By nice approximation, we can mean we, we can use the first order Taylor expansion. Now we, we we've implemented code in R and Python to solve both the convex and the non-convex formulation, and they are freely available on GitHub. Now let's take a look at, a, at the basic usage. In R, we would, we would first use the library function to load the library risk party portfolio. And then we would, we would use the risk party portfolio function, passing as arguments the covariance matrix and the risk budget vector. In Python, we would import the library and then create an object from the risk party portfolio class where we pass as attributes the covariance matrix and the budget vector. Then we can use the method design, and then we can retrieve the weights and the risk contributions of the portfolio. Now, for a more practical example, we are going to download data from, from Yahoo Finance, and we are going to perform a backtest using the portfolio backtest package. Now, we download data from 48 stocks from 2014 to 2020. And to use the portfolio backtest package, we have to write wrappers around the portfolios that we want to backtest. In this case, we are going to compare the risk budget portfolio and the maximum sharp ratio portfolio. The basic idea of these wrappers is that we write a function that takes in a data set and returns the portfolio weights. Then we can call the portfolio backtest function, passing the functions to compute the risk party portfolio and the maximum sharp ratio portfolio, also called the tendency portfolio, and then pass also the data sets and additional parameters for the portfolio backtest function, functions such as the size of the rolling window 
and the frequency of which we, opti we optimize and rebalance the portfolio. In this chart, we see the, we see the tangency weights over time. As we can observe, the portfolio looks pretty chaotic over time, which could be a problem because we would, we would waste a lot of money paying transaction costs. The risk part portfolio, on the other hand, seems to be fairly uniform over time, which is also an intuitive feature. Now we see the cumulative return chart where we can observe that the risk party portfolio outperforms the tangency portfolio for basically the whole time period considered. Consistently, the drawdown chart also shows that the risk party portfolio outperforms the tangency portfolio. Now we have the following takeaways. Risk party represents a shift from capital allocation to risk allocation. Risk party portfolios have been praised by practitioners because of their robustness in different market weathers. Even though one of the formulations of risk party portfolio is non-convex, state-of-the-art algorithms have been proposed in the literature and they are freely available on GitHub. Thank you.